what's up everybody welcome back to yet another video of channel codex in this video we will learn how you can add spin wheel fireworks and other kind of animation inside your flutter application with the help of flame a lot of time it happens that developers spend so much time writing their application but the app looks so static and boring that the user they leave the app but that's not going to be the case here after because in this video you will learn how you can add spin wheel how you can add fireworks and other type of animation and i will walk you through the complete setup of flame inside flutter and how you can use flame components within a flutter application stay tuned because it's going to be a fun tutorial and we'll have some fireworks at the end all right so here we are inside vs code it's empty flutter project nothing fancy i'll just wrap this text inside a column and add elevated button basically on click of this button we're gonna open up the dialog and show the reward menu all right instead of writing all the ui inside main file i prefer to create a home page and move everything related to ui inside that page and the reason i chose stateful widget because it has context within the state Nothing to worry about, just uh, refer home page from main and we'll just close the main file. So here I'm creating a method which will be responsible for opening a dialog. Now Flutter provides different way of showing a dialog like you can have about dialog, general dialog, adaptive dialog and even an, a normal dialog. But what we're going to use here is show general dialog because it gives more flexibility. You can control a lot of things easier. And to see how many parameters are there in the page builder, you can just hover over it and it will tell you that it gives you the context, animation and page builder, which we are not going to use. So you can use underscore for unused variables. All right, we just have a container. Let's see how does it look when we wire up open dialog on a click of this button. Perfect, the dialog works, but you are not able to dismiss it because you need to provide some extra parameters like barrier dismissible to true and you also have to set a barrier label i don't know why it's required but whenever you use barrier dismissible true you have to provide this uh, some kind of a random label or something uh, so that it works perfect so far what we have done is just a kind of a setup like we created an entry point where we're gonna show our gamification right so instead of this container we'll show actual game now let's go ahead and create a reward view and this will be our flame game now you already know that flame game is not part of a flutter sdk you have to add flame package and you can simply do that by hitting command shift p and add dependency and depend on flame package now you can also add it from pubspec yaml but i prefer to do this shortcut way and once you added the package you can simply resolve it with game.dart from flame package. It's that simple. Now, what it does, it gives you some lifecycle methods like on mount, on attach, on load, where you can define and load your components. So on mount event, we're gonna spawn component and basically we'll start with very basic just to clear the concept how component works. So we will start with something as simple as circle component. Now this add method is inbuilt. So whenever you call add, it will add the component. So let's go ahead and replace the container with actual game widget. Now you already know that Flutter is all about widget. To bring that game inside Flutter world, you have to use a game widget. And inside a game property, you specify what flame game you want to render. Perfect. Now when we run, we see that everything turns black. And the reason is very simple because our flame game has a black background by default, right? So we have to override that and specify that we want a transparent background so that we can see things behind our dialog. But you will notice that we can't see the circle component yet because we have to specify the radius, the position where it will appear and all those properties in order to see the component on a canvas. So here's an example component. Now let's go ahead and wrap this game widget inside a stack so that we can add a cancel button because this dialog, uh, the game widget is taking the whole dialog and you cannot dismiss it. So we need a way to cancel this dialog. So I have added a positioned component, which is icon button. And on click of this, we'll just say navigator.pop so that it removes the dialog from the navigation system.
perfect so everything works we are opening a dialog we have a component inside it and we are able to close the dialog now let's get deeper and implement actual spin wheel now you don't have to worry because i have already spent time on this component so i'll try to explain you as simple as possible so inside spin wheel class which is a position component which comes from flame game will define a radius that how much should be the radius of the circle and inside the constructor we will define the size which is going to be double of the radius it will anchor itself in the center easy right so while rendering we will loop through all the sections we have already defined that there are four sections. you can have five or six depending on uh, your need and for each section we will draw an arc now for arc to draw we need to provide the rectangular area which we will generate from circle itself by providing the radius as a center and radius as the radius so it takes the area where it will draw the arc now for sweep angle like how much arc should sweep from start to end we will divide the 360 degree into number of sections and you can simply multiply this sweep angle with i factor so initially it will be zero then it will be sweep angle multiplied by one sweep angle multiplied by two so every time it sweeps that much angle and it keeps on adding as a start angle for the paint we just created a paint object provided with a style fill and we're choosing different colors from this list of colors as simple as that we'll use wheel paint to paint the arc and let's go ahead and use a spin wheel what do you think is it gonna work let's see so click me and here we have a spin wheel which is somehow in the top left corner we can fix that easily by providing a position parameter so it goes like 200 pixel on x 400 pixel on y or you can just you know find a sweet spot where you want to put this spin wheel now let's write a method which will actually trigger a spin rotation effect for that we will create a spin effect which comes from rotate effect which is inbuilt inside flame engine so flame engine have a lot of effects inbuilt you can explore there are so many for different purposes and what we're going to do here we are just defining a random angle like how much time it will spin and we are using effect controller that it should spin for three seconds with ease out animation and we will just add that effect to component as simple as that let's go ahead inside our game and create object of spin wheel and we will test this by calling spin method on spin wheel object perfect here we have a spinning wheel you may want to leave it as it is or spice things up by adding a button component so you need a text component provide it as a button and on pressed event you can call spin wheel dot spin it works the same way but you'll notice the button is on top left corner as usual so to fix that we have to calculate you know we have to do some kind of a calculation with respect to the size and respect to the width of the button and it will come in the center all right but how do we know that the spin wheel has completed its animation so that we can trigger something else we can write our own custom logic for that we will create another method called determine winner and use it as on complete method on our rotate effect now here you can write your logic to find out whether the correct block correct section has pointed or not but we're going to leave that uh, for the future videos and to get notified in the source uh, widget we will have to provide a void callback and i made it optional so you have to check for null safety and if it is not null just trigger a call to it so from your spin wheel you can listen for on complete on spin complete event and once this event is triggered you can add anything you want and of course we are not leaving the tutorial here you can go to flame website go to examples and search for particle you will see a lot of animations pre-built there and you can also browse the source code so click on this arrow icon over here and you will get the github code so i'm just going to copy the fireworks section it's pretty simple method you can read more about it but we are not going into the details of that we'll just import whatever needed and we'll just copy paste whatever extra methods helper methods we need and now we can enable fire component now interestingly you have to add a particle system component first and then inside you can use a particle of firework let's give it a run and see what we have as an output 
So the code was giving some exception because of some random import. For that, I have to add a breakpoint to see, but everything is working fine. You will see that the firework comes on a top left corner. Now we can fix that simply by providing a translated particle where we will say that the offset is in the center of the screen and we'll give it a lifespan of one second. Perfect. So in a nutshell, I have described how you can bring your flame component inside Flutter world within a dialogue and how you can interact with it. And if you want to know more, you can go ahead and check this video where I've shown my journey of learning flame and how I built a simple game, which was a disaster, but uh, it's a fun thing. So make sure to check that out. Stay creative. I will see you guys in the next one.